Hey everybody, did you know that this February 2020 is a special February that only happens one time every four years? It is known as a leap year and we're going to learn all about it right now. A leap year is a year in which an extra day is added to the Gregorian calendar, which is used by most of the world. While an ordinary year has 365 days, a leap year has 366 days. The extra day is February 29th. Most other Februaries has 28 days, but in a leap year it is 29. And did you know that the extra 29th day, called a leap day, is the same day of the week as the first day of the month on February 1st? And also in a leap year, the months of January, April, and July all start on the same day of the week. A leap year comes once every four years, and because of this, a leap year can always be evenly divided by four. We have leap years because instead of 365 days, the Earth really takes a few minutes less than 365 and one quarter days. In fact, it's 365.24219 to be exact. It takes this long to go completely around the sun. So without leap years, the seasons would start one day earlier on the calendar every four years. So to give you an idea how this would affect us, if we stopped using leap years, in 360 years from now, spring, which usually begins on March 21st, would then begin on December 21st, which is actually when winter begins. Now some other countries use a lunar calendar based on the moon instead of the sun, like our solar calendar is. They have leap years, they add an extra lunar month. Different calendars add the extra month in different ways. To better understand the true origins of leap year, we'll need to kind of go back in time, way, way back, in fact, a few thousand years. The first traces of a 365 day a year calendar with a leap year was during the Egyptian empire. And the goal of the Egyptians was to create a calendar that was similar to the solar calendar, which would allow them to keep their seasons on track. Now, fast forward about 3,000 years later, when Julius Caesar, ruler of the Roman Empire, became the modern day father of leap year. Caesar felt it was time to recognize that winter truly existed and created a 12 month, 365 day calendar based off of that same earlier Egyptian calendar. This new calendar worked fantastic for a few years, but after a little while, it slowly was realized that the Earth actually has a little over 365 days per year, instead of exactly 365. So to correct this, Caesar instituted a leap year once every four years to ensure the man-made and solar calendars would stay aligned. Some cultures didn't have leap year on February 29th though, instead what they did was they made February 24th happen two times. Here's some pretty cool facts now. There are all kinds of leap day traditions and fun facts around this special day that comes every four years. Can you believe that there are over four million people in the world that are what are called leap day babies? Leap day babies are called leapers or leaplings. And there is a 1 in 1,461 chance of being born on leap day or being a leap day baby. Now every year divisible by 4 is a leap year, but every year divisible by 100 is not a leap year, unless the year can also be divisible by 400, that is when it is still a leap year. And did you know that women often choose this day to propose marriage to men? But in Greece, getting married on the leap year can be considered bad luck. So one in five engaged couples 
try to pick a year that's actually not a leap year. It actually takes the Earth 365 days, 5 hours, 48 minutes, and 46 seconds to complete the orbit around the Sun. That extra time it takes for the Earth to complete its orbit adds up over time. That's why every 4 years we add an extra day. It's so the solar year will stay in line with the calendar year. And even with the extra day added every 4 years, the calendar is still off by just over 11 minutes. So to fix this problem, leap year is actually canceled three times every 400 years. So how can you find out if it's going to be a leap year? Well, in order for it to be a leap year, the year has to be evenly divided by the number 4, like in 2016 or 2020. As well, if January 1st, the first day of the year, and then following December 31st, the last day of that year, fall on different days of the week, it's a leap year. And again, the Egyptians were the first to start leap year, but the Romans later followed the Egyptians and picked the date of February 29th. Different cultural calendars deal with leap years differently. The Chinese calendar adds a whole leap month every three years. And the tabular Islamic Hijri calendar has a 30-year cycle of 11 leap years and have 355 days and then 19 years have 354 days. So here are some more ways to explain a leap year. Our yearly calendar is 365 days long, but the Earth actually takes a little longer than that to make its way around the Sun. So this means that every year, we just add roughly 5 hours and 48 minutes of extra time to our year. And when you add these extra hours up, it adds up to about 24 hours every 4 years. That's why we add the extra day on February 29th to make up for that extra time. If we didn't add that extra day, eventually our seasons would start to shift and everybody would get confused. The leap year was actually introduced in 46 BC by Roman leader Julius Caesar, and it was called the Julian Calendar. However, the Julian Calendar didn't really fix the leap year problem. See, Julius Caesar, as well as many other people during that time, thought each year lasted for 365 and a quarter days, but that wasn't entirely accurate. Now we know each year lasts approximately 365 days, 5 hours, 48 minutes, and 45 seconds, or 365.24219 days, just under 365 and a quarter days. Now that doesn't seem like much, but over time, this small error caused a lot of trouble. See. 1,500 years later, the Julian calendar had fallen 10 days out of alignment, meaning that important Christian holidays weren't being celebrated on the correct dates. This made the Pope of that time take action. He decided that they had to modify the old calendar and upgrade the leap year system. This was when the new and improved Gregorian calendar was created and it was first implemented in 1582, and we still use that one today. So although Julius Caesar's idea was a good one and lasted over 1500 years, it's now obvious that it had to be changed just a little bit. So here are some other common as well as some maybe strange leap year traditions. A tradition says that on leap day, a woman can propose to a man but if the man says no, he must give a gift to not upset the woman so much. Maybe such as a kiss, a dress, or a piece of fabric. And in Denmark, the tradition varies and requires that if the man should refuse, he must give the woman 12 pairs of gloves. Now, of course, this tradition is pretty old-fashioned. Nowadays, it's not a big deal for a woman to propose to a man. 
In Greece, it's sometimes considered bad luck to be married on leap year. And in Taiwan, some people think that the month of February during a leap year can bring bad luck to their parents. This may cause grown children to return home to watch over and check on their mom and dads. And finally, we'll end with some even more leap year fun facts. In some countries, a baby born on February 29th will have his or her actual birthday celebrated on either the day before or after. For example, in Hong Kong, the legal birthday of a leap day baby is on March 1st. Did you know that the rapper Ja Rule was born on February 29th, 1972? Funny and ironic enough, February 29th is also known as Rare Diseases Day, which kind of makes sense since February 29th is also a pretty rare day. And did you know that frogs are associated with leap years? This is most likely because of their amazing jumping and leaping skills. And if you pay attention, you'll see that the Summer Olympics happen on leap years. Guess what? 2020 is a leap year, and the next leap year will be in 2024, as well as the next Summer Olympics. So make sure you enjoy your extra day on this planet. After all, it took many different people, many different calendars, and even thousands of years to figure it all out. So thanks for watching this video. We really hope you enjoyed it. And if you learned something new, make sure you click that like button. And also, don't forget to subscribe. And we'll see you on the next Hey Guess What?